Now on Studio G, we have the details behind the first launch of the first driverless shuttle bus. Plus, we sit down with James Weeble from UNLV Spectrum to talk about what Spectrum has to offer, HIV resources in town, and sex week. And we talk about what got Chicago residents actually excited for jury duty. Don't go anywhere. Studio G starts right now. Good afternoon and welcome to Studio G. I'm Caitlin Knapp. And I'm Brianna Haney. Saudi Arabia orders its citizens to leave Lebanon immediately amid rising tensions between the two governments. The kingdom is asking its citizens who are visiting or residing in the country to leave as soon as possible. Also breaking, O.J. Simpson was thrown out of the Cosmopolitan Hotel for belligerence. A Las Vegas Fire and Rescue captain is accused of paying for sex with a juvenile. Richard Lawfrey will face a judge on Wednesday for paying a 15-year-old girl $300 to have sex with him at his fire station. Lawfrey found her through an online ad that lists in the girl's age as 22. The case has been ongoing since April. Las Vegas and AAA launched the nation's first self-driving shuttle bus yesterday. The shuttle can transport up to 12 passengers with the onboard attendant. It has a computer monitor, but no steering wheel or brake pedals. Less than two hours after the bus was open for business, there was a minor hiccup. It got into a fender bender with a semi. Police say no injuries were reported. However, the driver was cited for the accident. The Link Promenade is getting a new attraction. Caesars Entertainment announced a new zip line. The project will cost $20 million, and it's set to break ground in spring of 2018. It will feature 10 side-by-side -side zip lines that launch 122 feet above the ground. Riders can choose to ride on their stomach or in a seated position, just like the Fremont Experience. The ride is more than 1,000 feet long, and guests can buy photos at the end. President Trump said Tuesday in South Korea that good progress is being made with North Korea and urged the regime to come to the table and make a deal. At a press conference in Seoul, Trump said it makes sense for North Korea to do the right thing. He also mentioned that the U.S. has aircrafts and a nuclear submarine positioned, but hopes we never have to use them. When asked if direct talks with Kim Jong-un would happen, Trump said, I do not want that. However, yesterday, Trump issued a tweet warning North Korea not to underestimate us. The world cannot tolerate the menace of a rogue regime that threatens with nuclear devastation. America does not seek conflict or confrontation, but we will never run from it. All responsible nations must join forces to isolate the brutal regime of North Korea. It is our responsibility and our duty to confront this danger together. What South Koreans have achieved on this peninsula is more than a victory for your nation. It is a victory for every nation that believes in the human spirit. Do not underestimate us and do not try us. We will defend our common security, our shared prosperity, and our sacred liberty. Trump administration is making changes to its Cuban sanctions program. Yesterday morning, officials revealed the reverse of some of the Obama administration's Cuban policies. Two years ago, then-President Barack Obama started a campaign to improve relations between the U.S. and Cuba. The Trump administration is rolling back on some of these policies by tightening the economic embargo, including an export ban on any entity that is controlled by or works for Cuba's military, intelligence, and security services. The Treasury Department says it wants to maintain opportunities for Americans to engage in authorized travel to Cuba. However, tourists who want to make a trip to the island will not be allowed if the policy is passed. November 7th was Election Day. 
Democrat Danica Rome is the first openly transgender candidate to win a Virginia House of Delegates and the first transgender person seated in a U.S. state house. Rome ran against 13 turn incumbent Republican state delegate Bob Marshall. Earlier this year, Marshall called himself the chief homophobe when introducing the bathroom bill. This bill would require people to use the restroom that corresponds with the gender listed on their original birth certificates, but the bill was denied. After her win, she spoke at a press conference. To every person who's ever been singled out, who's ever been stigmatized, who's ever been the misfit, who's ever been the kid in the corner, who's ever needed someone to stand up for them when they didn't have a voice of their own because there's no one else who is, a, who is with them. This one's for you. And this one is for, most importantly, the people of Haymarket. Amen. Coming up, we'll take a look back at what the Rebels have been up to this week. Plus, Studio G reporter Joaquin Lomali will give you your five-day forecast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. With audio, it's a fantastic thing. I can grow with everyone and everybody supports me as well as I can support them. I think it's great. I think it's a blessing to have this kind of equipment from the Green Spun family as well as the state of Nevada. And it's um, really informative to see, you know, how a radio show really works. Now that I do it, I have friends, I have people that want to hang out, and I get to play music a lot. It's very good too because we have all the top of the line equipment to work with and, and students here that can help you out, so it's a very, very good way to, to get involved in radio. Welcome back. Twitter has officially doubled their character count. Instead of 140 characters, you now have 280. The social media site tested the new character limit in September and received mixed reviews. Since the official announcement was made on Tuesday, the hashtag 280 characters has been shared over 350,000 times. Google grants $1 million to an Oakland, California-based nonprofit to bring more black male use to the tech industry. The Hidden Genius Project mentors young black boys in technology creation, entrepreneurship, and leadership skills. The grant was presented during the Silicon Valley event, TechSlam, and is Google's way of helping the group reach their goal of increasing the representation of black youths in tech. Facebook is testing a new method to prevent revenge porn, but the catch is, it requires you to upload your own nudes. It is being tested in Australia in partnership with a government agency. If someone feels that they are at risk, they can contact eSafety and may be asked to send them a nude photo. Facebook system would then be able to recognize those images without storing them. eSafety Commissioner Julie Inman said they're not storing the image, they're storing the link and using artificial intelligence and other photo matching technologies. So if somebody tried to upload that same image, which would have the same digital footprint, the photo being uploaded would be blocked. In this week's Rebel Roundup, the intersection in the College of Fine Arts presented the Rebel Voice poster campaign, giving students an academic forum to speak out on what has defined their Rebel experience. This series of posters highlighted diversity and unique intersections of the student body. Participants filled out a survey regarding their experience and art students took headshots to accompany them. Visiting lecturer Shelley Volsh spoke on how our furry friends have increasingly become valuable in human lives. Using dogs as an example, Volsh discussed the trend of pet parenting and whether this new relationship is here to grow or a trend of the time. In honor of Native American Heritage Month, a Dash Dinner discussion will host Decolonizing Our Diets, Patrick Naranjo, of a member of Santa Clara Pueblo and expert in Native American cultural property protection, is hosting tonight from 4.30 to 5.00. Moving on to sports at UNLV, our UNLV's hockey team is getting ready for their games this weekend. Compete against University of Jamestown in a series of games against Minot State University this weekend. They have been practicing all week to work out any kinks they may have in their game plan against their upcoming opponents. First year defenseman Jonas Gordon talks about his experience in the new team. I think anytime you, you go to a new team, you, you learn new systems and learn the coaching style and 
and make adjustments from your game on how, how you're going to fit in and, and I guess kind of what role you're going to play with, with the new team. So I think that's something we've definitely figured out in the first first quarter here and then uh, yeah moving on we're just we're just touching up and getting better every day and and uh, finding chemistry with with whoever we're playing with. Being a new team poses challenges as not having veteran leadership in the locker room but they look to overcome this with attention to detail and trust in their coaches with strategy and game plan. I think we're just touching up I mean obviously we know our systems are, are 12 games into the season now so I, I think we're getting comfortable but it's just a matter of getting the rest off from having a week off and then uh, and then going from there. UNLV's hockey team is focused and determined to take the lead against very competitive teams in the hometown of Las Vegas at the City National Arena. The team will be playing against the University of Jamestown on Thursday, today, and they will also play Minot State University on Friday and Saturday. Let's go out and show support to our Rebels. A UNLV maternal HIV clinic reopens after the program was abruptly suspended in September. The staff and 62 patients were left without warning and care when the program was closed. A lawsuit on behalf of a four-year-old girl was filed citing the child's re reliance on the specialized treatment the program provides. Before the court hearing yesterday, where the court would be asked to force UNLV to reopen the clinic, a UNLV spokesperson announced it wouldn't be necessary because the program was back up and running. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Joaquin O'Malley with your weather forecast. Now, taking a look at Las Vegas right now, we yeah. are currently at 61 <coughs> degrees. Now, I was again, about to add a little bit, but I know I'm are going to be yeah. during the morning and at nighttime. It is going to be a little chilly out there, but during the day, it's going to be nice and warm, so you have nothing to worry about. Today's high is going to be at 77 degrees, and our low point is going to be at 55 degrees. And again, to, and it's nice and sunny out there. But if we take a look around the valley right now, we can see that for the majority of the uh, of the valley we are around the 60s so it's not too bad the low point will be over at Centennial Hills at 58 degrees and Summerlane at 58 degrees as well the high points will be at summer at Southern Highlands Green Valley and Nellies at 64 degrees now, if you're currently right now at the UNLV campus, we are currently at 63 degrees with a visibility of 10 miles and the wind is 7 miles an hour. So it's not too bad. We have a nice breeze out there. Humidity is at 29%. And if you're going to be out pretty late at the UNLV campus, we are at 56 uh, degree. Or we will be at 56 degrees. The wind will be at five to 10 miles an hour. So it's going to be very similar as it is right now for tonight. Clear and cool is expected for tonight with a dew point of 30 degrees, which brings us over to the picture of the day. Now this photo was taken from CNN uh, in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, where they have just gotten their first look at snowfall this season. Uh, the snowfall lasted about two hours, which is interesting because uh, now that just, just last week, there were at a 60 degree weather. So so as we can see from this photo, the snow just lightly sticking onto the grass and trees, but melts when it lands on the road. And, you know, since it's still warm, but that will definitely change for them coming up tonight and leading into the weekend, which I will be explaining in just a few moments. Now, taking a look at the five day forecast here in Las Vegas. Now, we don't have to worry about snow like other parts of the region do, but here we can see that we are going to be in the 70s for the remainder of this week and leading into the weekend with the low points of 50s and in Saturday we're going to be seeing the lowest point of the week from the high of 73 and the low point of 50 which brings us to the national forecast now as I mentioned before we are getting an Arctic cold air front which is coming down from Canada and will be making its way to the Midwest and the Northeast regions uh, now this cold air front is actually going to be bringing the coldest weather of the season um, so they are definitely expecting some record lows between 20 to 25 degrees below normal um, down over here in the northeast. Taking a look at the rest of the country, we can see that Atlanta and D.C., 
uh, and uh, New Orleans. They are getting some heavy rain as well as over here in parts of Northern California, Oregon and in Washington. As for the rest of the country, we can see that it is going to be sunny for the most part. Some areas is going to be partly sunny, but it's nothing we can't handle. And that's all the weather I have for you today. We're going to take a short, quick break, but when we come back, I'll be sitting down with James Weeble to talk about the HIV resources around the valley. As far as Studio G, at first it looks overwhelming, and at first it looks like it's a lot of work, but I'll tell you what, it's the most beneficial class I've had at UNLV to date, without a doubt. You get to not only develop stories and work on your interviewing skills, your editing skills, and your shooting skills from a camera perspective, you get to work on all the equipment that's in the studio. So you're working on audio, you're working on directing, tech directing, you get to produce your own show. You can take a 30 minute newscast and make it your own. And that's really cool about Studio G. Like I said, a lot of it seems overwhelming at first, but it is by far the best class I've taken at UNLV since I've been here. I'm Joaquin Lomali. Welcome back to Studio G. I'm joined by James Weeble from UNLV's Spectrum. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So, um, so talk to me about uh, the UNLV Spectrum. Um, so talk to me just a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So UNLV Spectrum is the LGBTQ undergrad group here at UNLV. Um, and we have meetings every Tuesday at 6 o'clock uh, in the Student Union on the second floor. Just look for the rainbows. Um, and there we have fun social meetings where we get to know um, our fellow queer students around campus, um, and it's a fun, welcoming environment for LGBTQ plus students uh, and straight allies. So anybody that wants to come by and have fun at our meetings, we welcome them. Um, we'll have game nights once a semester, um, and then we have a couple of other events that we do outside of our normal meetings. Um, oh, wow. We have our drag show that we do every year, which is a huge event. We had over 200 uh, students and community members uh, come through, and we had um, performers from UNLV and from the community as well. So it was a great event. Awesome. Now, I heard that uh, UNLV Spectrum is hosting the Sex Week. Can you talk to me a little bit about that and what it is that you're doing for it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I grew up in the uh, Clark County School District uh, school system, and so mm -hmm. we did not get a lot of sex ed, um, especially not around LGBTQI folks. So that's why we have kind of uh, created Sex Week. Sex Week, uh, which is short for Sexuality Week, um, is a group of events that we do throughout the week um, that focus on different aspects of sexual identity. So uh, last night we had a couple of workshops on race and sexuality, so how race and sexuality kind of like interplay. Um, we had a workshop, uh, it was called Toy Box 101, where um, we had a wonderful facilitator come in and uh, show us different types of sex toys, different uh, pleasure models, um, and how to use those safely, how to use those um, healthily. Um, and so our next event, our closing social is going to be tomorrow. That is by far the most fun event. Um, it's going to be hosted at the Erotic Heritage Museum. It's going to be starting at 5.30 p.m. Um, and it's free. It's open to uh, any UNLV student that wants to come by. If they want to bring some of their friends, um, they're more than welcome to. We're going to be having a scavenger hunt uh, throughout the museum, so it'll include free admission. Admission is normally $30, um, but it's included with that. And the scavenger hunt will um, be an activity so students can go throughout the museum and um, whoever can finish it quick, we have uh, prizes for them as well. Some of those include mm -hmm. uh, toys, some of them are uh, tickets to see Puppetry of the Penis, which is hosted also <laughs> at the Erotic Heritage Museum. So it's going to be a blast. Um, we had a bunch of students come last time and it was so much fun. So really looking forward to that. So again, that's at the Erotic Heritage Museum um, and that's going to be starting around 5, 5.30. And, you know, with recent dispute as far as with the uh, UNLV HIV clinic here, um, what are some other resources that students, people can use around the valley? Yeah, absolutely. As far as like HIV. Absolutely. So um, we have a couple of different resources that we can use throughout the valley. Um, the one that we recommend first is uh, the Gay and Lesbian Center of Southern Nevada, which is just down the street uh, at 401 South Maryland Parkway. Um, it's on 
Maryland Parkway just past Charleston. Um, it's in the middle of the road, so if you're going down Maryland, you cannot miss it. You will literally have to drive around it. And um, they have their clinic open from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, and then from 1.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And they do rapid HIV testing there, so you'll know your results within 20 minutes. Oh, wow. um, they also include syphilis testing for free. Um, that Those results take about two weeks to get, um, but their clinic is incredible. Their staff is really warm and welcoming. Um, we also have the... Uh, um, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, which mm -hmm. um, they have mobile testing bands throughout the valley. Um, sometimes they'll come to campus, um, but for um, for a majority of their practice, they um, they have their clinic. Let me look at my cheat sheet at uh, <laughs> thirty two oh one South Maryland Parkway. So again, down the street, um, and theirs is open on Wednesdays from five thirty to eight thirty p.m. And then on Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. Awesome. Um, you can also take a look at their um, website, hivcare.org, and that has where all of their testing locations are and where to find their mobile yeah. vans. <laughs> all right, perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Again, thank you for joining us. And right now we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have entertainment news for you. We are member supported. KUNV 91.5, The Source. Here's why you should become a member. Become a part of the public radio family while keeping jazz alive in Southern Nevada. Every member receives a discount card to businesses and restaurants around the valley, along with a premium of KUNV branded items. Exclusive access to KUNV ticket giveaways for concerts and events and private members-only events with prominent musicians such as Paul Taylor, Vincent Ngala, and many more. We are 91.5 The Source, and that source is you. So become a member today. My goal is to be an on-air personality, and that's what my career is. It feels really incredible because I've been wanting to do something like this for my whole entire life since I was little. I mean, it's an opportunity to express myself, get my voice out in public, and, and get heard for things that I feel strongly about. This station like, helped me out a lot, gave me like, a lot of information I didn't know about a radio station in general. I mean, it was really easy to get a show here. Um, I took the classes and did the shadowing. They give you a lot of freedom to do what you like, and feel like there's a lot of support in places you can get answers to. It's just an incredible experience because I could take what I learned here and I could turn it into something more. In the U.S., jury duty is a responsibility, and although many of us dread it, it is required. This week, a former U.S. president showed us that no one is exempt from the law. A motorcade drove through the streets of Chicago as they led former President Barack Obama to a courthouse downtown on Wednesday. Obama was one of 168 people who reported for jury duty and was assigned to one of 16 panels. Crowds gathered as the media tried to catch a glimpse of him and other jurors tried to shake hands with a former U.S. president. One potential juror expressed his excitement. I'm looking forward to uh, serving my civic duty with, alongside him if I get the chance. It shows us all that uh, I don't have a good excuse and it's an important duty for all of us. So if he's going to show up, I guess we all have to show up for this. Obama was not selected to serve on the jury and was dismissed at lunchtime. Singer Mariah Carey is the latest celebrity to be accused of sexual harassment. Michael Anello Carey's former head of security says that she, quote, committed sexual acts with the intent that may be viewed by him. He also claims that Carey called him a Nazi skinhead. A lawsuit is supposedly in the works. This Tuesday, Omnia Nightclub hosted a benefit concert for the Las Vegas Victims Fund. Celine Dion performed her titanic hit, My Heart Will Go On, but added a twist courtesy of DJ Steve Aoki.
She killed it. She did. Let me tell you, that was absolutely amazing because you just picture this graceful person who has this amazing voice. And then you see that. I wish she was my mom. I know. I wish I could <laughs> dance like that. And, and it's nice. It's nice because you never see that side of Celine Dion, you know? Yeah, especially with everything that she went through just to see that side of her and for such a great cause as yes. well. Yes. And it's, it's always nice to see, like, two celebrities coming together that are unlikely pair, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you would never think. Steve Aoki. Exactly. Right? I'm waiting for a single to come out with the two of them. <sighs> and do a My Heart Will Go On, and then just a club version, just like, yeah, let's go. It would be absolutely amazing. I'd pay for that, for sure. I would definitely, yeah. definitely go to that. Yeah. So hopefully something will be in the works, I guess, yeah. you know. We'll put it out there, and then hopefully someone picks it up. Yeah. This is our idea. Maybe we'll get some royalties on it. Our I mean, I, I definitely hope so. <laughs> well, not only do our Rebels have school spirit, but they also have a lot of talent to show. Studio G reporter Kaylee Talons went to the Rebel Variety Show to see what it was all about. The Office of Civic Engagement and Diversity hosted a Rebel Variety Show for UNLV students to showcase their talent, from singing to acting and to dancing. We also have an individual performer aspect, so it's kind of like American Idol, where we just draw all these different types of talents. This year we had singers, we had a piano player, we had a spoken word, we had dancers. So just drawing all the different talent that we have on campus and showing it off. Bianca Barbarian, the director of membership for the Rebels Events Board, says the planning process for the event takes a while. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different things that we have to think about, worry about, stress about each year. So it takes a while, but we always, we always pull it together and pull through. The event awards a student with a scholarship, but Bianca explains what other benefits a student can get from participating in the show. For the event, you get exposure for your talents, and you also get to show off your school spirit to the entire school. Students do not have to be a part of a group or Greek life in order to perform in the show. Students are more than welcome to participate. Not that many students really want to partake in RVS because it is such a strenuous event on them and on us for making sure you have your skit, making sure you have a script, uh, music, and all that stuff. Getting it all together is real time consuming, so some students don't always have the time to do it, but we always try to encourage them to do it. Sarah Nishat, a performer at the Variety Show, shared her experience. It was so fun. Like, I honestly didn't know what I was expecting. I went into it and I didn't know it was a whole, like, Greek life thing. So when I stepped into the green room, I was like, what's going on? But it was really entertaining to watch and, like, super fun to perform. For Studio G, I'm Kayleen Talents. I wish I had those moves. <laughs> Once again, students are more than welcome to participate, perform, and join in on the fun. Another Harvey Weinstein update for you. The Television Academy, an organization that helps with the Emmys, voted in favor of permanently expelling Weinstein. Now, over 60 women have accused him of sexual assault. This comes after the Producers Guild of America banned him just last week. After nearly a decade, LEGO is relaunching one of their largest sets. The Taj Mahal set is 16 inches high and 20 inches wide and made up of 5,923 pieces. It contains four facades, a central dome, and <coughs> arched windows. The set will be available on November 27th, just in time for the holidays. That is all the time that we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day, Rebels. You didn't think I would do it. No, I thought it was good. <laughs> I was happy.